Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Today is the first lesson of the first module of grade four. So we're going to be diving right into place values uh, here in module number one, and especially here in lesson number one. So this is a little bit of a review of what we've had previously in third grade, and we'll get reacquainted with moving our numbers around on our place value chart as we multiply them by 10 uh, or divide them by 10. So today we're going to work on multiplying by 10, and we'll take a look at, I think, about two or three problems today from today's homework to get you started. Let's take a look at problem number one and read the directions with me, okay? Label the value, uh, le I'm sorry, label the place value charts. Fill in the blanks to make the following equations true. Draw disks on the place value chart to show how you got your answer using arrows to show any regrouping. Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to remember how to draw our place value chart. Let's see. And what I remember is that we start with our, we start over here in this column, and that's the ones column. I usually just do it with a simple O. And then the next one over here, this one, let's see, there's ones, then there's tens, then there's hundreds, and finally there's thousands. And I think we could go even higher than that, but this is as big as our current place value chart goes. And that's our place value chart. So we know that we can place just about any number here in our place value chart. And let's see what number we're tr what equation we're trying to uh, model this time. We're trying to do 10 times two tens. Well, let's first look at the two tens. Let's see, how would we represent two tens in our place value chart? Let's see, I would definitely need something in the tens place. And it looks like I would have two of them. So let's see, I think I could do one, two, that that would be two tens. But now what if we needed to multiply two tens by 10? Let's see, two tens by 10. Well, let's see, for every 10 that we've got, we'd need to make 10 of them, right? So let's see, so that dot right here, we would turn into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 dots. And for this one right here, this other 10, we would need to multiply that by 10. So that would become 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Awesome. And so I can tell right away that 2 times 2 tens, which is what we have here, is going to have give us how many tens? Well, 10, 20, right? 20 tens. So I can, that's my first part of my answer, right? 20 tens. But now this later question is, hey, is there a way that we could regroup those to form a more uh, precise number? a number that fits better with our place value chart, and I think we could. I think we could group each of these tens together. I'm gonna to circle them. I think we could regroup those and draw an arrow over and make a hundred. Ten tens would make a hundred, and if ten tens would make a hundred, then we can do with this other group. So I'm gonna do that over here, and sure enough, we end up with two hundreds, right? Two hundreds over here. We've grouped each of our sets of 10 tens. We've made 100 out of it. And now we have 200 or 200. So 10 times two tens is 20 tens or 200. Fantastic. Let's take a look at problem number two. Now, I'm not going to do all of problem number two together, but I would like to read through it together just to see if we can get some early ideas about how we would handle this. So, number two asks us to complete the following statements using your knowledge of place value. So, for A, it says 10 times as many as 100 is how many hundreds? Well, let's just stop right there. 10 times as many as 100 would be 10 hundreds, right? 10 hundreds. 10 times one of anything would make 10 of them, right? 10 times one cat would be 10 cats. 10 times one boat would be 10 boats. And 10 times 100 is 10 hundreds. I'm gonna leave the other part of this for you though. Um, here's a, B is a little bit trickier. 10 times as many as blank hundreds is 60 hundreds or blank number of thousands. Interesting, 10 times as many as how many hundreds would give us 60 hundreds? I'm going to leave that one for you. Let's take a look at C. Blank as eight hundreds is eight thousands. So what would it take us to, to get from eight hundreds over to eight thousands? I'm going to do a quick version of our place value chart. We have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. Let's see. How would we get from having eight in the hundreds column to having eight in the thousands column. What would we have to do? Oh, I think that would be 10 times as many. 10 times as many. 
10 times as many as 800s is 8,000s. Sure, that sounds good. And D, I'm going to leave for you, but the question is, blank hundreds is the same as 4,000s. Huh. So I'm going to let you maybe work on your own place value chart to try to figure out 2D. And then you're going to have to use pictures, numbers, or words to explain how you got your answer for Part D. So I don't know. I might use a place value chart, but you might use something else. You might use your own words. You might use pictures. You might just use straight-up numbers. I'm going to leave those for you. Let's do one more problem today. Let's do problem number six. Tomas's grandfather is 100 years old. Tomas's grandfather is 10 times as old as Tomas. How old is Tomas? So Tomas's grandfather is 100 years old. Let's see, in our place value chart, ones, tens, hundreds. That's how old the grandfather is, right? 100, 100. He's 10 times as old as Tomas. So wh what would Tomas's age have to be so that we could multiply it by 10 and get to 100? Well, let's see. 100 is the same as how many tens? Oh, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? If we had 10 tens and we, mold it, we bundled them up together, we would get 100. So let's see, 10 tens. So I think that means Tomas is 10 years old, right? Because if we started with just 110 and we multiplied it by 10, we would get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 tens, and that would be the same as 100, and that's Tomas's grandfather's age. So I think that's it. I think that Tomas is, Tomas is 10 years old. And even though we didn't say so in advance, we use a read, draw, and write strategy in our class, right? And so we have read the problem, we have drawn the problem, and we have written our answer, because the answer is not 10. The answer is Tomas is 10 years old. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us for the very first uh, episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems for Grade 4, Module 1, Lesson 1. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.